In this talk, we're going to learn about the general features of helmets. We will begin with learning about different types of eukaryotic parasites and then focus on helmets. We will learn about the different types of helmets and the characteristics of nematodes and platy helmets. We will also learn the body plan of nematodes, cestodes, and trematodes. There are many different organisms that can cause infections, but protozoa, helminths, and parasitic lice are considered as the eukaryotic organisms that act as parasites. Protozoa are unicellular organisms that belong to the kingdom of protista, while helminths belong to the kingdom of animalia and are multicellular worms. Parasitic lice, on the other hand, are animals that come under the phylum of arthropoda and hence they are insects. Helminths are multicellular parasitic worms that can have long, elongated, cylindrical, or flat bodies. They come in a variety of lengths from about 1 millimeter to 10 meters. They're known to cause infections that can affect billions of people around the world. And it has been shown that about one-sixth of the human population suffers from ascariasis, which is caused by the helminth ascaris. It's also known that more than a billion people affect from whipworm. Hookworm, on the other hand, infects over half a billion people. And thus, helminths are known to cause a lot of misery in humans. Helminths are invertebrate animals, and hence their cells lack a cell wall. They have a tough cuticle or tegment that covers the entirety of their body to offer protection. This cuticle can be smooth or rigid, or it can possess spines, or even have nodules called tubercles, depending on the type of helminth. On the interior end, helminths can have attachments like hooks that are shown in the figure, or they can even have suckers or plates that can aid in attachment. They have different organs like reproductive organs, respiratory organs, and excretory organs, and thus they do have a developed body plan. There are different types of parasitic helminths, and they can be classified into three main groups. The nematodes, or the roundworms, the cestodes, that are also called as the tapeworms, and the trematodes, that are also called as flukes. Nematodes are helminths that belong to the phylum Nematoda. They have a cylindrical body and possess an elementary canal. An elementary canal is basically a digestive tube, and in the case of nematodes, the elementary canal begins at the anterior end where the mouth is and runs all the way to the posterior end where the anus is. This is similar to what we see in our bodies too. Nematodes have different sexes and hence there are males and females as shown in the figure. Some nematodes will use one host throughout their life cycle and these nematodes normally live in the gastrointestinal tract of the host. Other nematodes, on the other hand, can use multiple hosts, and such nematodes normally infect the blood and tissues of the host, and hence are not restricted to the gastrointestinal tract. Cestodes and trematodes are helminths that belong to the phylum platyhelminthes. These are invertebrates that are known to have a dorsoventrally flattened body as seen in this picture. Here we can see a cestode which has a very flat body and in the next picture we can see a trematode that also has a dorsoventrally flattened body. Platyhelminthes are also known to be acylomates in that they do not have a body cavity. And thus, when we look at the picture, we can see the digestive tube that arises from the endoderm, but there is no body cavity surrounding this digestive tube. The tube is surrounded by tissue that arises from the mesoderm, 
which in turn is surrounded by tissue that f arises from the ectoderm. This is different than coelomates like us where there is a body cavity called as a coelom. In the case of the coelom, that body cavity is covered from all sides by tissue that arises from the mesoderm. And thus, in the case of humans, the peritoneal cavity is basically what the coelom is. There are organisms which are pseudocoelomates, where instead of having a coelom or a true body cavity, they have a pseudocoelom, as shown in the figure. In this case, we do see a body cavity, but the body cavity is surrounded by the digestive tract in one end, and on the other end, it is surrounded by the muscle layer that arises from the mesoderm. Thus, unlike the coelomates, the coelom is not covered on all parts from the mesoderm. And hence, it is called as a pseudocelom in the case of pseudocelomates. Cestodes are helminths that are also known as tapeworms. These are hermaphrodites with a very flat ribbon-shaped body and they lack a digestive system. On the interior end of the cestodes, they can have structures like suckers or sometimes even hooks can be present. Some cestodes will use one hose to complete their life cycle, while others can use multiple hosts to complete their life cycle. Cestodes have segmented bodies, and these segments are called proglottids. Proglottids play important roles in reproduction, and the posterior proglottids are more mature than the anterior proglottids. Proglottids have the male and female reproductive systems, making cestodes hermaphrodites. They can form fertilized eggs. The mature proglottids are those where the reproductive organs are mature, and hence they can form gametes. The mature proglottids then become gravid proglottids, and in this case, these are the posterior proglottids, and they will have eggs. One way to identify a gravid proglottid is to see for the presence of uterine branches to which the eggs attach. The gravid proglottids can detach from the main body of the cestode, and this helps in the dispersal of eggs. Trematodes are helminths that are also called as flukes, and they tend to have a leaf-shaped body. They have a blind branched elementary tract, and what that means is that there is only one opening to their elementary tract. Hence, ingestion and excretion occurs from the same opening. They normally have two suckers. One is in the form of an oral sucker at the anterior end, which is used for nutrient intake as well as for waste regurgitation. Thus, this is the opening for the elementary tract where ingestion and excretion occur. They also have another sucker called as a ventral sucker, which plays important roles in attaching to host tissues. Trematodes are usually hermaphrodites, though there are some that show different sexes, like the schistosomes. When we look at the picture, we are able to see a trematode, which is a hermaphrodite, where we can now look at the female reproductive organs, and in the same organism, we can observe the male reproductive organs, making them hermaphrodites. Most helminths that cause infections do not increase their numbers in a single host. Thus, the eggs that are laid by the helminth in the infected host do not hatch within the host. The severity of helminth diseases in terms of the number of helminths that are present in a host relies on the frequency of infection. And thus, the increase in number of helminths is not due to the hatching of eggs laid by the worms inside the host, 
but due to the frequent exposure of the host to the eggs of the helminth. The lifespan of a helminth can be weeks or months, but there are a few that can live for decades. Helminths possess a tough cuticle and are able to secrete enzymes, and this helps them protect themselves from the host's immune system. They are known to cause tissue damage directly into the host, but the response of the host's immune system to eliminate the helminths can also cause tissue damage. With this, we come to the end of our talk on helminths, where we looked at different types of helminths and the health problems associated with helminths. We looked at the characteristics of different helminths and the body plan of nematodes, cestodes, and trematodes.